so you're welcome back to this video so in this video we are going to learn about react hooks so hooks allow function components to have access to state and other react features because of this class components are generally not no longer needed so in other words without hook you cannot update the DOM and I'll show you a demo about that very very soon now there are three rules for hooks hooks can only be called inside react function component so excuse me hooks can only be called at the top level of a component so immediately you enter the block of a component that is where you want to call all your hooks hooks cannot be conditional so you cannot say uh, if this if a, if a variable is true then you call it a hook if not you don't call it or you declare a hook it, it has to be declared without a condition then there are when it comes to hook scope there are two scope we have the local hook and we have the global hook now the local hook is unique to only a component so if you must share a hook to another they must do that using props because hooks they are actually variable so since we can we can send uh, string data type number data type or object or object data type as props then we can also send a hook as prop then there's global variable now if you want to send a hook value as a prop to another hook that means those two hook must be called in the same component like the time we are calling the car and the cat component inside the app component but what if they are not called in the same place and you want a, a hook state that is updated by a, by a cat component to, to be reflecting on the nav component so how do we do that that is where the global hooks comes so some common local hooks that we'll be using or that we'll learn for this tutorial or for this video is the use state the use ref and the use effect then for the global hook we are going to learn about we are going to learn about a uh, recoil and inside recoil recoil comes with so many packages we are going to look at the atoms and the select then we are going to learn how to create our own custom hook so this use state this use ref and this effect they are the ones that react gives us out of the bus but you are going to learn to create our own hook so a custom hook are reusable functions so any function that you want to be reusing all over your project like a function that will be fetching a, a data from a database a function that will delete from the database or update you can create a hook for that it helps your code to be neat and reusable so when you have component logic that needs to be used by multiple components we extract that logic to form a custom hook now a custom hook looks like a component but must have use before the component name example use fetch use addition so now we've got the theory let's do the practical so let's go back to our VS code then just to make things easier we want to create a new component so that when I push this code to git you can use it to learn things to be organized so this one of your hooks then I'm going to create this one hooks dot JSS then arrow a f c e so let's add this to our nav bar so let's add it to our app too so that we can be navigating to it so I have my 
Oops. Oops. So if I save this, I need to add it in my nav here. So this is the last. Remove oh, this. Then bring this down. Shift Alt arrow down. Then this should be hooks. Remember, if you spell it wrongly, it's going to the error. This will catch it. So hooks. So excuse me. So if I do that, I go to my nav. I'll have this. So hooks is now available, and there's nothing there. So this is how it should look very nice so now let me show you why we need hook now without hooks you cannot update the done so let's create a counter so let's count be equal to zero then I have a function of add count let me use set count so this function will be used to update count so I want count to be plus equal to remember the compound operator so here's the arrow no parenthesis okay so this is going to update count so and cut that add it with the h2 so I need to an error h2 hooks then I'll put here h3 count then I'll put my count then I'm going to put here a button plus plus so this will update the count so on click to call the set count so if I save this and view on my browser this is how it look like so I have count I have count plus plus so if I click this you notice that the count is not updating hmm? on the DOM but what about on the console so let's try it out so the console.log count so let's try again you see the count updates count updates now it's not at 16 but the count is remaining zero and why is that because in react you can't update the DOM without passing through a hook and the simplest hook is what our use state is the simplest and one of the most powerful in react so let's redo this our Uh, our account app is in hook so now the structure of hook is this you say let then your square bracket uh, let's just use a set a then use then initial value so what does it mean so let me move this shift what arrow
Ahab. So let me explain now. A is the A is a variable whose initial whose value is same as initial hey, the wrong spelling as initial value so if I pass in zero here it means since a is a variable the initial value of what is what is is zero if i pass in 1000 here since a is a variable then the initial value of a is what i want so whatever whatever value you pass here that is what the initial value of a will be then what about the set a set a is a function that must be used to update a so each time i want to update a so it so it just like this set count function so each time i want to update a from its initial value i must pass through this function and it's given to you out of the box by use state so let's do that so i'll come here i'll say let count set count use state and that will auto import for me then I'll, count, I'll put it as what zero so because I use the same the same function name here now this is my set count I cannot activate this function that is here now instead of this So I'll consider log this. Um, no, I can't. I can't have the same function as this. It will conflict. So what I'm going to do is I'll leave that as it was. Then I'm going to add here function add count. set count be equal to count plus equal to one so that is going to work for me so I'm going to change this to add count so if we do this now just a way of recap from here this our count represent our a this our set can represent our set a then the initial value here is what a will be so at this point a is what i mean count is what is zero then if i click this button i want to add count by one so if i do that sorry, excuse me the value of count will change from zero to one if i click it again from one to two just like that and because i'm passing through a u state which i have this method of the box my DOM will be updating. So let's try that one and you see it changes and it changes with that refreshing. So any just to keep that SPA spirit, that is single page application spirit, see that React gives us some things to use to meet that standard. So it gives us the link tag instead of the anchor tag. Now it gives us some functions to update the DOM instead of doing it the final JavaScript way. So if you don't do these things you will not enjoy the power of react so you see that's how it works now what if i want to uh, reduce count so that is very simple so i'll put here reduce count reduce that now is very reduce and i just change that to minus so what I'm going to do is to duplicate this change it 
create a new line so I can have this I simply change this to minus minus and this to reduce okay so if I do that I'll have the reduce count to reduce this and the add count to reduce this so what if I don't want it to be reduced more than zero so you see now it keep so I can have a condition so these are some of the things that you can play around with so I can have a condition control X so I'll say if count is less than zero that means if zero is greater than is less than or equal to zero then it should not do anything then else it should reduce so let's test the theory so I want to plus but if I want to reduce now you see it stop reducing you see but if I want to do that is this so but but there's a shortcut for this in, in, instead of this empty else here I can cut this out so when you play around with codes you can know how to simplify things so I can put a bracket here I can put a knot here put a bracket here and put a bracket here so it means if now if this is not true then it will it will run this but if it is true it will not run this so it just the same thing as what we've done before so let's try it again so if I want to reduce less than zero you see it stops but if I want to increase more than zero you see it stops so by this we eliminate the use of the else so that is how we use the use state now but there is, is one slight issue with the use state and let me show you that so if I come here say console.log no, let me use the short code console.count rendered So this will show me how many times the page has rendered. So if I do this, you see it renders two times twice. See, so as I press, you see, you see how many times it's running. So for each time I render, I click a page, it does this rendering twice. So that is just one of the reasons. So each time a use state value updates, it renders a page twice and it's very fast. So if you want a page to be updated without re rendering a page, then you have to use what? The use ref. So that's one of the use of the use ref. So you can you can use to update a page without rendering. Okay, so let's do that. So we have let click count be equal to use ref. So this is another uh, uh, this benefit of of a uh, of uh, the ref. You can use it to keep track of an operation that occurs under the hood. Then we want to display. Then each time there is a re rendering by by a use state, then you see the value of the use ref. So I want to have a button now. And I'll call it click count. Click 
click count so each time the user click this page i want to update the value of this so i put click count dot to current plus equal to one then i'll have here where do, where do i display this thing now so click count let me use my the pipe symbol not that oh shift this click count dot current so if you want to update a user ref if you want to display a user ref variable, use the variable of the user ref dot count. I mean dot current because it's an object and and this current holds the value, the, the initial value here. Then if you want to update it just like a normal variable, you can do that. So let's do that. So if I save this, you notice that you will see the you 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 see the click count is what is zero now if i click this thing five times one two three four five you notice that there is no rendering but if i click this one one you notice it shows me five see that is one of the important so i i, I flick it again for many times now four times so if i click this one one you see it shows me nine so if you need to take a data under the hood without refreshing a page then use it to do something later or that or use it to send to a database under the hood or choose a time where you want to update it then you use user ref so there are so many uses of user ref but that is one of its unique behavior is that it doesn't have to re-render a page to when it takes when it state changes and for that reason it stops the re rendering so so you notice each time I click a page this guy does not change even though it's meant to change so unless i click it like this and i make a change now because this guy cannot reduce and there's no rendering so you see this one is it's still remaining now if i click this now it renders so the use effect is a hook that can be used to to run a code only once when the page first reloads it can also be used to fetch data from a database each time a use state changes so let's do that so let's see how we use the use effect so this effect is like a function so use effect then I'll, I'll come here I'll put my dependency array so I want this code to run only once. So I put a consider log. I put data effect. So you so you notice that that this is going to run only once now each time i update the dom is that the data fetched is not 
is not uh, uh, this does not change so each time i click that you see data fetch has not changed but immediately i put i put count here as a dependency so this dependency means that it will run at first once then each time this state changes then you want it to ref refresh this page so or run the code that is inside this use effect so if i do that so each time i click now you will see the page rendered because is is being rendered each time so that is one of the use of this effect so you use it to run a code can you to run a code just once or to or to run a code each time a use state value changes so that is it so we have seen how to use the use state the use effect and the and uh, and the use ref and just to point out something the use the value of the use state and the use ref can be any data type it can be number it can be a string it can be an object and it can be an array so just we'll, we'll learn more about that as we'll see but just know that the value here can be any data type so let me add it here the value of use state um be any js data type so any js data type which can be string array object boolean can be can be here so that is it for for this now the next thing that i want to do now is the global hooks so one issue with the global with the local hooks which is this one which is this this use state now let's create another variable here so let's say if i want if i update a value in my in my hooks now it should be reflecting on 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 the number or on any other page so how do i do that now if one of the way to do that is to pass a prop so i will i will have to come back to this abdot js and i'll create the hook here then i'm going to pass the set value to my hooks then if i update it it's not going to be reflecting so i also pass the initial value to to my nav so that when i update it from my hook here it's going to work and let's try that so that you will see the one that is easy so i'll create a hook here so remember it should be created at the start so let cat set cat then i'll have a use state then i'll have zero so the initial the the initial cast state is what is zero so what i'm going to do now in my nav bar i'm going to pass the cat as an initial value as a prop so cat then i'm going to pass the set cat as this so set cat set cat so what will happen now is first of all in my nav i'm going to 
put a pipe symbol here then cut cut so let's the structure cut from here not to have an error so if I save this and go to my browser you notice this hmm? cut is zero so now I'll come I'll come back to my hooks the structure my set cards remember from our props set cut then I will have another button so this will be our add cut so add to cut add to cut then here I'm going to run a function set Okay, there's another value is I'll use previous value. I use the previous value. Previous value plus one. So if I if I don't want to use this method, then I have to also pass the the cut as a prop which i don't want so let's see if this will work so if i add to cut here you notice it updates here i add to cut here you see it updates so if i want to use this same value in my cut I have to also pass it as a word as a prop so you see that's how I'll, I'll be passing props all over the place but with atoms I don't need to what pass props so let's install our recoil so I'll I'll tap my terminal say npm install recoil so it's going to install the recoil for us. So while it is installing, let's create a recoil. I mean an atom. So hi, I like doing it. Inside my SROC, I'll create a folder called atoms. So I will now create different atoms and this is going to be cut .dss. so now I'm going to create the atom so I will say export const What variable do I give this? Cut. Atom cut. So you can limit any variable. I just ran out of variable name, so that was why I was thinking. So this is how you use it. So you use the atom from recoil and an atom just a piece of state that can be shared all over the place. But before we do this, or oh, let's finish with this place first. The key now I usually save it as atom card, just like the variable name. And it should be unique, then default should be what? Zero. 
So if I save this, before I can use Atom as a global variable, the same process we use for our browser router, which is the React router, we have to go to our main and add something. Now we are going to wrap the Atom or the or the required root all over all over uh, the browser data and the app application so recoil root hit your enter then do it like this so this is the step one so you you wrap it all over here so that so that uh, the global scoping can be possible if you don't do this and you try to use an atom or a selector you're going to have an error so next i will now i will now go to my When I go to my navbar, so I have to remove all these things that I, that I have because I don't need again. But I'll still leave this one here. So here, I wanna put let card be equal to use recoil value. Now I'll put the atom that, that we created that will supply this initial value which is this atom card. So I'll put atom card and that is it. So you can't just put any value here. It must be an atom that you created in your atom listing. If you, if you receive a value that is not in this atom format that was not created using this atom then it's going to find out you and you have error so i save that then next i'll go to my hooks which is this and i'm going to disconnect this because we will not be using it again so i just use it as a nice intro to what atom can do so i'll come here as part of my hooks I wanna add let cut set cut use recoil state. So you use your you use the you, you use the use recoil state when you when you know that you update an atom in a in a component. But when a company just want to use the value, not to update, then there's no need to use the, the, the use request state. If you use it, it will still work. But you will only be using the initial value, which is variable here, and not the function. So that's why we are using the use request state here. And in the nav, we use the use request value. We just subscribing. The number is subscribing to the atom, but is not setting the atom. So atom cut. So instead of this, so we we'll leave it like this. Set cut and see if, if it will work. I've not tried it like this, but let's see. And there's an error. Now I mean, no JS. What error is that? Oh, we, so each time we install a new component, we have, we have to refresh the page so that to be aware that there's a new component so if i go to my if i go to my hooks now and i update add cut you see it works even without that now another bit of this now is that if i come to my flower here i can also use the use require value without without having to pass it as a prop. So let's do that. So let's go to our flower. 
Ah, flower, okay, there's our flower. Now come here. I'll just add this one here. Cut. And of course, I will use the use require value here. So let's cut equal to use require value. You hit that side to import and atom cut. So this is just the structure and it works very nicely. So you see now I have my what cut five. So if I come to my hooks. Which is updating the cut and I increase it. So if I go to my flower, see increased on what nine in my nav is what nine. There is no passing of props or props drilling. So this is how it works, the global scoping. So now we now know how to use our local state variable, which is this state, and our what atom. But what about the select? What about the select? How do we use the select? So the select is is just like the atom, but it is used to derive a state from an atom. In this state from an atom. So let's say, for example, I want to for each of the cut value, I want to check if it is an even or an odd number. Then I will return that that. The cut, the cut item is even, the cut item is odd, just like that. Or I want to multiply it by 2 or by 5. So let's do that. So to do that, we need to go to the cut atom still. Then we are going to export const cut even or odd to selector so just like atom then the key will be the same name so so that it will be unique then next we we'll have our Let me see if I can still remember that. So next we have our what is that? Get okay, let's go to the documentation. I've forgotten that. But nearly I see it I'll remember. So the coy selector because a letter example so we have it from this I don't frequently use it so that's why I forget it okay so get so I was in order but only that I was not sure and I don't want to waste time so that is it get this and you return your value so let's do that so get then you have a function and you start your get no, I think that should be an arrow function then so const you need to get the atom that you that you want to select here so I'll put let's mm, I'll just put a cut equal to get then you put the name of the atom you want to select which is what atom cut 
so you can select so many atom because the selector is used as a derived state then return so how do we check for even an odd number so a cat modulus is equal equal to zero means is so it's going to return even then else is going to return odd so that is what we are going to do so how do we use this now so we are going to also use it just the way we use the use state so let's check this out so let's go to our flower so I'm going to select even odd be equal to use require value then cut even odd so that is the selector or, or you, you can even name it selector even odd then here we're going to add the same thing okay let me leave this so i'm just going to add a pipe symbol here I'm going to add even odd. So if the value that is inside the cart is even, it's going to show even. If it's odd, it's going to show odd. So let's try that. Error duplicate atom key, atom cart. Let's go back to our cart. What is it? No. Let me refresh this page. Okay, it's already showing. I was looking at it at the wrong place. So it's it's working here. So at this point our cut is what zero so if i come to my hooks and and click this i go back to my flower to show me what odd then i come here i click to five so it that means five is what it's odd so you see that's what selector is doing so let's do the last one now the next one is in selector so we are we are going to to be multiplying the number by what by five so we are going to do the same thing so just copy this then we're going to say selector cut by five by five so this is going to so let's do this paste this here and we are going to use the same thing so a cut so this is a this is this is this is a local variable so it will not affect so all we have to do is put a cut times five so it's going to return the value by what by five so if we if we do that let's go to our nav do the same thing so this one is going to be cut by five 
then here is going to be selector part by five so this is our part by five here i'm going to put another pipe symbol and i'm going to put cut by five so if i do this whatever the value is of of cut is going to multiply by five so you see so uh, so so the selector is used as a derived state expectation of violation duplicate atom key atom cut this is i don't know why i keep showing me this error and i didn't use duplicate atom key let me see I didn't use that so in my hooks I also did not use that here it's different cut tone. then in my nav I have this atom cut and this so there's no duplicate atom key here okay so I don't know why I keep showing me that. So but I see it works. So very very nice. So the last thing I want to do here for this video is our custom hooks. So hooks are reusable functions. When you have a component logic that needs to be used by multiple multiple components, we can extract that logic to a function to a custom hook now let's do that so now remember this uh, our counter app that we, that we did here this and this we can extract this and use it and put it inside a custom hook so that the logic for this everything from here to here including this our use state will no longer be in this page so it will just be a single line just like this our use state so let's do that using the custom hook um, we'll end it for here it's been, a, it's been a long video so let's add that so I put that as my custom hoops. So I like to split things like this so that it be nice. So this will be the counter counter. So remember a hook must start with use. So use counter dot js. No, here is not the here is not the compulsory one, so I can just put counter is in the exporting name. Remember, from here it says a custom hook is like a component, but must have used before the component name. Example: use fetch, use add. So let's do that. So I'll do my arrow A F C E and it's going to show me counter but I'm going to change this to use counter The next, I'm going to remove this return. Now it does not return a HTML, so it returns an object. 
so what i would love to do now is in this our hooks i'm going to cut this out ctrl x come to this my well i'm not going to cut it out i'll just comment it out so that for reference purposes so i'll comment it out and i'll paste it here then i'll also comment this use state out but i'll copy it to see and i'll comment it out so the page is looking very disorganized but just so that when i if i send the code to you you remember that oh that was when we were using the counter without the use counter which is our which is our custom hook so i have i have my counter i have my counter function i have my reduce counter so what i'll do here is i'll return three things i'll return the count the add count and the reduce count very nice so how do i use this now in my hook so i'll just come below this right here and i'll say let the structure use use counter remember from a custom hook and it accepts no argument so if i want one to to accept an argument i will do that so I'll put here account uh, add count and set and reduce count. So you see now this our counter app will work just like before. Now there will be no difference. Use states it's not defined this always happens to me when i copy a code so i needed to import use state here so as a real developer or as a founder developer you need to know how to fix your error unless you have you have low spirits so it's good not to allow error to be your friend so mostly how to read and understand the error message so if i count now you see the count of dates i reduce it reduce i do my click count you see everything works like before now let's build a sing a simple app now we want to use a custom hook so that when we pass in a full name like a first name and and a last name is going to return the initial so if i pass in amadi as my first name and chile as my last name it's going to return my initials so let's be that custom hook and easy to end this video so that you we'll understand so that you have a chance to understand it if you didn't understand it using the counter one so this one is going to be get initials dot jsx so arrow a f c e so this is going to demonstrate how to use a custom hook that accepts the parameter so i'm going to remove this and output a variable called initials so this one is going to be so let's use the name function or let's say let's use first name and 
last name then we will now have so am I to destructure this? I'm not passing it as a prop it's a function so I'm not to destructure it so all I will just do is to return let initials be equal to my first name dot zero plus last name dot zero so whatever name I pass as my get initial is going to get it there so get any she has wrong spelling javascript will always catch you so that is it so this is how simple it can be so let's use our get initials so uh, i will go to my hooks then i'll put let initials equal to get initials and I'm going to put my first name which is Amadi and my last name which is Chile so if I come down here and put my and put the initials here my h4 initials so you see the, the, the initial is what ac if i pass it as a you see what pm so that is it so this is how we use the custom hook now you can make this looks nice so you can ensure that if the person passing any, any data type that is not a string then it will throw an error and that is very very nice so let's check that let's see console.log just want to try something console.log type of first name so it will show the type of first name so the, so the type of first name is a string type of last name so you can use this if the type of first name and last name is not a string then to throw an error so that is it for this video you see javascript is very very fine and interesting you just have to learn different concepts and practice them remember if you if you forget just like i forgot you can easily go back but because you've understood it before you don't have to start reading the code all over again oh what is this just you just need to know the syntax and you get back to work so that is it and i will see you in the next video